Last weekend, I was away traveling with a pastor friend, and in trying to decide where to go, we settled on Canada, a destination that we had both been to before. Our flights were on time, just two hours each way. The weather was a perfect 75 degrees all week, so we had a great time. It was a perfect vacation all around. You know, as I look back over my travel and all the years, I think I can divide the destinations into two categories. Times when I traveled to someplace new and times when I traveled to someplace known. New and known. Now, I don't think that one is better than the other. I think it really just comes down to personal preference and what a traveler considers relaxing and enjoyable. But when it comes to journeying through life and growing in faith, God is always extending an invitation to us to travel to someplace new. And he promises that when we do, we can discover things about ourselves, others, and God. So let's dive in. Our first reading today described a trip taken by the prophet Elijah. Now remember that prophets were individuals chosen by God to be his messengers. And when we meet Elijah today, he is on Mount Horeb, which was called the Mountain of God. Why was he there? Well, he wasn't on vacation. He wasn't hiking in the mountains. No, Elijah was hiding. See, Elijah had done something incredibly brave, but really, really dangerous. God asked Elijah to take on the prophets of Baal, who was a false idol, and he did. And they were so angry with Elijah that they wanted to kill him. So he fled to Mount Horeb and hid in a cave. He hoped and prayed that God would come to rescue him, and he did. God appeared, but not in the way Elijah expected. Elijah thought maybe that God would make a grand entrance, maybe with a powerful wind or in a fire like he appeared to Moses and the Israelites, or maybe in an earthquake like he did at Jericho. But God chose another way to make his presence known. There was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. This was God whispering to his servant Elijah, I'm here. I'm with you. You are not alone. So what drove Elijah to the mountaintop was fear and worry and doubt and confusion. But what he experienced when he got there was worth all of that. God revealed himself to Elijah in a totally unexpected way, which enabled him to keep going. The gospel today took us to a second location, to a boat on the Sea of Galilee. Now remember that some of Jesus' apostles were fishermen, so this was someplace very familiar to them, a location they'd traveled to on a daily basis for years. It's hard to imagine anything that could happen on that sea that they hadn't seen hundreds of times. On this trip, a storm blew up, and they were being tossed about by the waves and the wind. And right in the midst of this storm, the apostles saw Jesus walking on the water. They couldn't believe their eyes. These professional fishermen had never seen this before. How can somebody walk on water? It must be a ghost. And they were terrified. And then... Jesus spoke these words to them. Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. But Peter wasn't convinced. You'd think after witnessing Jesus' miracle of feeding 5,000 people, nothing would surprise Peter, 
but this did. And he said to Jesus, If it is really you, Lord, command that I come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. So Peter stepped out of the boat, the storm raging all around him, and began to walk on the water. And then, just for a second, Peter wavered. He doubted that he could be doing this, and he began to sink. And he cried out, and immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, and God saved him, and they got back into the boat. So this trip of a lifetime is something that Peter would treasure for the rest of his life. So two amazing readings with one identical message. To Elijah on Mount Horeb, and to the apostles on the Sea of Galilee, the message from God is this. Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. And that's a message that we can't hear enough especially when times get tough. And I know that many of you have been there or are there right now. Might be a marriage or family problem, a health crisis for you or a loved one, money worries or fear about the future. It might be something so big and terrifying that you don't know which way to turn. And it has you feeling isolated and alone like Elijah in that cave, or feeling tossed about by the waves, feeling like you're drowning, like Peter and the apostles on the sea. If this describes what you're going through, you may be asking, well, what can I do? Well, the answer is the one that Elijah discovered on the mountaintop and that the disciples discovered on the sea. And it's a lesson every disciple must learn on the journey to the kingdom. The very same lesson. Hear God speak these words to you. Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Have faith and believe that God is with you. But here's another important point that Jesus teaches. It's not just you. Everyone you know is going through something everyone. And just as Jesus reached out his hand to Peter, he wants us to do the same for others, to assist one another in whatever ways we can. This summer you've heard me talk about the power of prayer. It's an amazing spiritual tool that can change lives. It can change your life and the lives of others. But we don't always know what others are going through because we don't take time to ask. In a previous message, I told you about the phone call I had with a representative from T-Mobile, my cell phone provider. Josh was the name of the rep I spoke with. And after helping me with a billing problem, Josh asked me to pray for him because he was going through a really tough time in his life. And his request caught me off guard, but as a priest, it shouldn't have. Well, there's an update. About a month ago, I was again on the phone with T-Mobile, and this time, I asked the rep, is there something you'd like me to pray for? And she said, yes. I'm preparing for final exams, and I'm really worried about them. And I said, you got it. And I prayed for her. It can be as simple as that. All we have to do is take the time to ask. Our parish staff does this every time we meet. One person leads an opening reflection and then closes the meeting by asking the question, for what should we pray? Then we go around the table and each person shares whatever is weighing on their heart. It might be a personal struggle or something in their ministry perish, or the world. It's an easy way for us to support each other. And because we do it each time we meet, it's not awkward. Anyone can do this, and everyone should do this. You don't have to be in a staff meeting or a member of a small group. Prayer can happen anytime, anywhere, with anyone. 
Think of all the people you encounter on any given day. Family and friends, co-workers and classmates, neighbors, even strangers. Every one of them is dealing with something. Something that has them worried, stressful, or fearful. You can share your faith by praying for them. All it takes is that one simple question, is there something you'd like me to pray for? So I want to invite you to take a trip and experience this right now. But don't worry, you won't have to go far, any farther from where you are right now. At the beginning of Mass, I invited you to introduce yourself to someone here. I'm now going to ask you to go find that person again and ask this question. Is there something you'd like me to pray for? Then they will ask you the same question. Just ask each other the question and listen for the response. Then we'll come back to our places and together we'll pray for all the intentions we heard. So let's take a minute to do that now. Thank you, everyone. And now let's just pause for a moment of silence so we can pray for each other's needs. Praying for our needs and those of others must be a regular part of our journey of discipleship. As you go through this week, be aware of the people that God places in your path each day. It might be someone you know or a stranger on the phone. And if the opportunity arises, ask them this simple question. Is there something you'd like me to pray for? It can be uncomfortable, but only for a few seconds. What's the worst thing somebody could say to you? Thanks, but I'm good. More times than not, you might be surprised by the response. And you will have the opportunity to grow in your faith as you assist someone in need. And I'll close my message with this prayer for you and everyone here. God of love and mercy, every day you invite us to travel to someplace new, to experience your power and goodness in incredible ways. And whenever we struggle, you whisper to us as you whispered to Elijah, I am here, do not be afraid. Like Jesus with Peter, you extend your hand to keep us from drowning. Strengthen our faith that we might step outside of our comfort zones. Move us to assist others with our prayer. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.